we're going to continue playing with the exploration of color and all that color can do. And you're going to have a choice. You can either do a complete abstract or you can do a more realistic painting based on a still life. That's your choice and it's up to you. For a complete abstract, we're going to recall what we did in class. Remember I handed out these shapes, the square, <clears throat> circle, and the triangle, and you created beautiful compositions in pencil. Here's one and here's another. Well, you're going to do the same thing. Create a beautiful composition by overlapping and uh, adjusting different sizes if you wish, and this time you can paint them in any colors you want. Simply have fun making an abstract painting, having colors dance across the surface. Now, you can use these three shapes, or if you remember in class, I gave you the option of creating your own shapes. And there was this little handout I gave, which you're going to see all of this on the PowerPoint. And two students did these wonderful abstracts based on their own creative shapes, okay? So you're going to come up, if you choose this, to do a drawing, an abstract drawing with shapes, do it in pencil first, make a nice composition in pencil, and then enjoy painting it in. See what colors can do, muted colors, bright colors, different sizes and shapes, and come up with a very, very lovely colorful abstract. That's your first choice. Okay, your second option is to try to do a realistic painting. So many of you are doing so nicely with the shading and a lot of three dimension or a realistic painting is based on shading. So if you'd like to try that, that's fine. Set up some objects, usually five to six. You noticed I put a sign of the times, a cleaner, and lots of colorful paints and brushes and a paper towel. I set it up and I did it in this realistic way. There's a little process of how to do that that you'll see on the tape. Or, if you want, you can interpret it abstractly. It doesn't have to be realistic, but it is based off of the still life. So you see the difference. I had a lot of fun doing this. I was loose with the color, didn't worry about the shading. I made sure my colors danced around. You see yellow, 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 red, 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 red. It's a really nice composition and it works well. By the way, on the PowerPoint, I have other examples of interpreted uh, still lives abstractly. And here's another one. Someone did this. We set this up in class, and they did this very lovely, colorful interpretation of a still life. So it's up to you. I did a little demo of how to do this. I speeded it up because it could be boring watching me paint over and over. But I did do a demonstration of how to do it. What you do is draw it, block in your general color all over, put all the general color of the objects in. Then you go in and you add your darks of each object, your lights of each object, and adjust the color all around. Okay, so you'll see a quick video of how I do that. Or, again, your choice to do a great abstract. Okay, so here's a still life I set up. Huh, a little um, current of the times with the Clorox or the fantastic clean bottle, some tubes of paint and brushes. When I start out, First of all, I did a drawing on here. And so what I'm doing now is blocking in the general color of each object on the canvas. Only the general color, okay? Um, I'm carefully doing that. I'm going to work around the canvas. I started, of course, at one end, but I am going to move around. And you'll see as I do this, just the general color. Of course, there are lights and darks on each of the objects, but I'm putting in the general color. I like a black background as I do in class because a black background makes the object stand out a whole lot better. All right, so there I go blocking in that beautiful ceramic container <clears throat> that I made <laughs> way back that I keep my brushes in. All right, I'll throw some brushes in there. I tried to pick a dynamic composition with some interesting negative shape spaces like that triangle by the brush and the towel holder. I have some interesting negative spaces by in between the brushes and the triangles. All right, now I'm working on the background and you can see the background supposedly is black, but I'm putting in a general medium tone because it's not solid black at all. It's lighter black and darker black and there are some shadows. So I'm putting in a light to medium tone all around the background. You see I have the yellow on the bottle, the green top, 
orange, blue, and pink jars of paint, general color. And again, I'm working my way around the background. There are many ways to approach a painting. This way is very simple, it's easy, and understandable. I'm speeding it up a bit in terms of you watching what I do so you don't get bored to death. Okay, try to hang in there. Almost. All right, there I go. There are all my medium tones nicely put on. Now you'll notice that I have yellow on one side and I put a bit of yellow on the opposite side. So that leads your eye around the canvas. The center has the orange brush and the orange tube of paint that's standing, that leads your eye right there. So you can really work your eye around the whole piece and it's very integral, it holds together. I put in my darks of each object, then my highlights of each object, and then I adjusted the color wherever I wanted to. It's not straight super realism, okay? You want to get a facsimile of the objects being on the table. I like to use extra globs of color and make it as lively uh, as possible, and that's why I keep a sketchy kind of brush. So once again, you have your choice, a complete abstract, or try a representational painting, or an abstract interpretation of a representational still life, okay? I can't wait to see them.